there's two ways to think about knee replacement surgery if you finally get there. Uh, one is, should you replace a part of the knee, if only a part of the knee's gone bad, or should you do a complete or total knee replacement? And I spend a lot of time in my office talking to patients about which one of these options is better for them. So let me just review with you guys my uh, approach to this. If you look at x-rays of patients that have had knee replacements, this one on your left is an actual x-ray of a patient that's had a partial knee replacement. So you can see that the inner side of this knee joint has been replaced with this metal and plastic prosthesis. But the outer side of the knee joint, which was normal, was left alone. Contrast that to a total knee replacement where the whole entire knee top and bottom has been replaced. And so essentially that gives you an idea looking forward to the rest of this talk as to what is a partial knee replacement, part of the knee, and what's a total or complete knee replacement. We as doctors think about the knee as being in three compartments. There's the medial compartment, which is the part on the inner side of your knees where, you, where your knees touch one another. There's the lateral compartment, which is on the outer side of your knee. And then there's what we call the patellofemoral compartment, which is the part behind your kneecap deep inside. And so if your pain is clearly located to one part of the knee or, or another, you might be a candidate for a partial knee replacement. I usually ask patients to point to where their knee pain hurts them the most. If they take their hand and kind of wave it throughout the whole entire knee, I can pretty much predict what their x-ray is going to show. They're going to have arthritis throughout the whole entire knee. Whereas if they say, Doc, you know, it hurts me right here, and this is the spot that always gets me, then pretty much you're, you're thinking ahead to that being a patient who might just have isolated arthritis to one compartment of the knee. So we start thinking about partial replacement options. This is what a total knee replacement looks like. Um, the uh, metals that are used in both total and partial knee replacements are a combination of cobalt and chromium. It's an alloy uh, that's been found to be very effective and very durable over time. The component that is on the femur bone is very highly polished, as you can see here. The part that's down below in the tibia bone usually has a spike of some kind that, that anchors it in place. And in between, I don't know if you can see it very well, is this piece of plastic. This is a very high molecular weight, medical grade polyethylene plastic, which serves as the bearing between the two. And so as you walk around, bend your knee, move back and forth, you have this highly polished, smooth metal surface that's gliding on this very, very highly polished, uh, durable piece of plastic. And that's the part that actually uh, uh, supports your weight and will allows your knee to move. If you look at uh, what the surgery actually looks like, um, it's, it, it's important to uh, understand that a total knee replacement is ex exactly that. It's replacing the whole entire knee. So what we do is we actually open the knee up. This is an actual photograph of surgery. This is the end of the femur bone. Uh, we use different jigs and instruments, as you can see here, to size and position our tools so that we can actually remove or shave off or cut, if you will, the diseased part of the bone away. So in the end, we end up taking off uh, various pieces of bone like you can see here. This is a picture of the femur bone looking at it from the side and in a typical knee replacement we'll shave down this front part of the knee, we'll shave off the back part of this knee, and then we'll shave off the ends and then do these little chamfer cuts. And so in the end you get a knee that doesn't look quite like the knee you started with but gives you this geometric pattern that will accept the geometry of the prosthesis that we're implanting. And in the end this is what it looks like when it's all said and done. So that's a, that's a total knee replacement, but what if you're a, a patient like we were just talking about that has a decent looking x-ray, in this particular x-ray, the outer side of the knee joint looks very good. The inner side of the knee joint, however, is starting to show wear. You can see how the bones here are closer together than the bones on the outside part of the knee. So this is a person that has pain on the inner part of their knee with arthritis that at least on x-ray appears to be confined to the inner part of the knee. Well, it would seem to me anyway to be a potential waste if you're going to throw out the baby with the bathwater, if you will. I mean, this is a knee that has a problem that's clearly affecting the patient, but the rest of the knee looks pretty good. Uh, that's, those are the people that I consider anyway for partial knee replacement. So here's a few facts about uh, partial knee replacement. There are many products on the market, as there are with total knee replacements, to allow you to replace the, the part of the knee that's diseased. And the decision regarding which of those products to use is highly dependent on both the doctor and the patient. There's many factors that, that lead us to, to choosing one implant or, over another. I've been using for the past uh, two years or so a particular device made by a company called Conformis, which is based out of Boston, uh, which makes two partial knee replacements. This one here is called an IUNI. It replaces the inner part of the knee only. 
or an iduo, which replaces the inner part of the knee along with the front part of the knee while leaving the rest of the knee alone. The reason that I like this particular implant is that it's entirely customized to your knee. This is a unique proprietary technology that uses CAT scans to image your knee, get a three-dimensional representation of what your knee looks like, and then based on that data, manufacture an implant that's unique to you. Your implant will be a one-of-a-kind in the world. You'll, you're the only one that will ever get this particular implant because it's made specifically for you based on the CAT scan that was done of your body. So the way this works is, um, or, or the advantages to it anyway, is that you get a superior fit for every patient. I mean, if it's made for your knee, you, you know it's going to fit. It's like a custom suit or a custom pair of shoes. It was made based on your measurements. Um, there's no sizing compromises, and what I mean by that is when we do conventional knee replacement, we have to decide during surgery between a size 2 or a size 3 or a size 4. Well, what if you're a 2 and a quarter, you know, or 2 and 3 quarters? Then we have to choose which size will fit you best. You know, we're, we're doctors and we make good decisions, but what if we guess wrong? What if we give you a size that's slightly too small or slightly too large? There could be problems for you down the road. Um, the tibial implant, which is the uh, shin bone, um, is completely perfectly matched to the geometry of your bone, so you get perfect fit all the way around, which could potentially give you better support of the implant and better durability over time. Uh, further advantages of this particular implant is it preserves bone. You know, implants work very well, but sometimes they don't. And if you have to take them out and do it over again, you want as much of your body's bone to be remaining to accept the second implant if that's necessary. So if you cut off too much bone to begin with, for whatever reason, the implant failed or became infected or what had you, what have you, and you have to remove it, you don't want to take it out and then be left with something that doesn't even resemble a knee. You want to have something that looks like a knee to implant the second prosthesis. So it's good to preserve bone. And it leaves the doctor implanting these with surgical options in the future to, to do easier reconstructions if those become necessary. Uh, these are the two products I was talking to you about just a second ago, the IUNI on the left and the IDUO on the right. The way it works is um, we, uh, we do a CAT scan of your knee. We do it here at this hospital. We then email that data to the uh, company up in Boston. And they use that information to actually fabricate for us these uh, plastic jigs. These are the instruments that we use to prepare the knee for accept acceptance of the implant. Uh, they come to us about four weeks later in a tray like this, which is sterilized, all the little different um, navigation instruments and jigs and so forth that we use to implant the knee are contained within this packet. That's what they look like when they're laid out on the operating table. These are all specific to you. They're one of a kind. They're made for you based on your knee, based on your CAT scan. And then uh, from there, this is uh, more of the same, uh, we go on and, and implant the device. Uh, this is an interesting slide. This is a, a, a particular individual that I operated on probably about a year ago now, and he wanted both of his knees done at the same time. And he had, he had partial knee arthritis, and so we did partial knee replacements on both of his knees. This is his left knee. Look at, look at the geometry of this implant, fairly straight, up and down, and the geometry of the tibia, you know, fairly simple C-shaped curve. And then look at his opposite knee. Look at his left knee. Look how this implant curves, right? And look at the geometry of this. It's a little bit more squared off, a little bit long, more elongated in size. This is the exact same guy, one right knee and one left knee. Imagine if we had taken him and tried to implant a conventional off-the-shelf device into his knees. They would have fit okay. I mean, the devices that are out there are very, very good. But there's no way that that shape would have fit exactly like that shape. They're completely different. But in this particular case, we were able to match his anatomy to his implants and get him two knees that worked very well for him. So next question, OK, so we have this, this conversation in the office, total knee, partial knee. We get done talking, the patients always want to say, hey, doc, so which one is better for me? That's the million dollar question. Um, it, the answer is, <laughs> how's that for a, uh, a political answer? It depends. There's a lot of advantages and disadvantages of both. Partial knee surgery, without doubt, um, is less complex, uh, simpler, quicker surgery, 
with an easier recovery. There's really no doubt about that. We can do it through a smaller incision, typically three, maybe four inches. Um, the hospital stay is shorter. Many people want to go home the same day. I'm not yet comfortable sending people directly home from the operating room when we do knee replacement, so I usually keep them overnight, but most people go home within a day. And there's a quicker recovery. It's not uncommon to see people coming into the office for their first post-operative visit, you know, 10 days, 14 days after their surgery, walking virtually normal, no canes, no crutches, very happy. So that's a typical partial knee patient. There are disadvantages to partial knees, and there's no doubt about that. If we do a partial knee, and you have a little bit of arthritis in other parts of your knee that didn't seem to be bothering you ahead of time or that we couldn't see on x-ray or didn't identify at the time of surgery, as time goes by, that arthritis may progress. So there's the possibility with partial knee replacement that although you may have a good result initially, a uh, year, two years, three years, more, more period of time down the road, your knee may start to hurt again due to progression of the arthritis. And if that happens, it's necessary to do more surgery, and usually that involves taking out the partial knee and implanting a normal total knee replacement. So there are definitely advantages to total knee replacement. Um, if you replace the whole entire knee, it's like a rebuild, right? You could take your car into the mechanic, and they can you know, change the valves or give you a new transmission or what have you, but there's nothing like getting a whole new engine, right? You know it's going to work. So a total rebuild with a total knee replacement it's um, very likely that, that that first operation will be the last operation you ever have. The second thing is that total knee replacements um, have been around for a very long time. The partial knee replacements, particularly the type of technology that I'm talking about that I've been using, is new. I mean, new things oftentimes work better. They sometimes don't. So we don't have a track record on partial knee replacements like we do with total knee replacements. There's now very excellent uh, research and medical data on the type of total knee implant that I use that has been around for over 20 years. So if you ask me, hey doc, how long will this last? I can tell you based on tens of thousands of devices that have been implanted within reasonable probability how long it's going to ask, last. If you ask me how long is this partial knee going to last, I can tell you I believe it will last this long or do these things for these particular reasons. But the honest truth is we don't know. And we're at this hospital involved in a research study that's trying to answer that question, but let's be honest, we just started using it a few years ago. It's going to be a decade or more before we actually know how well it, it works down the road. Uh, there are disadvantages to total, to total knee replacement. Like I mentioned just a few minutes ago, the surgery is more complex. There's more to do. There's bigger incisions. Um, there's just more um, technical aspects of the surgery which are important to get right and which require more time and more effort. So the surgery is more difficult. Because of that, the hospital stay is usually longer. Um, I do knee replacements at this hospital typically on Mondays and Tuesdays. Most patients go home on Thursdays and Fridays. So you're looking at, instead of one night in the hospital, uh, typically three. That's the average for us. Uh, I think it's exactly two and three quarters if you look at our data, but about three nights. And the recovery can sometimes be more difficult. Um, we have a lot of tricks to try to help control pain and swelling after surgery. We use nerve blocks. We use very sophisticated medication and so on. But there's no doubt that after total knee replacement surgery, the first couple of weeks, you're just not yourself. It, it hurts, it swells. Um, it's just not, um, it's not something you would want to go through on a regular basis if you didn't have to.